Hello everyone! In this robotics and mechatronics tutorial, we will learn how to control a DC motor by using a low-cost motor driver with the part number L298N. Also, we will learn how to connect this motor driver to Arduino and we will learn how to write an Arduino code for controlling the motor driver and for controlling the DC motor. But before I start with explanations, I would like to mention the following. First of all, it took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as more than 300 video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot! Also, I would like to mention that this particular tutorial that you're currently watching is a part of a large series of tutorials on how to build low-cost mobile robots as well as mechatronic systems that can be used for demonstrating machine learning, SLAM, navigation, and that can be integrated with the robot operating system or ROS. This inexpensive motor driver can be used, for example, to control DC motors, of this robotic platform. This is basically a differential wheeled robot that I'm currently building. Here's our motor driver without connections. This motor driver can be used to control two motors at the same time. In my case, over here I attach the connections of my DC motor. On the other hand, over here you can attach another DC motor. However, in my case, over here I attach the oscilloscope probes. I'm using the oscilloscope in order to visualize the control signals. These two connections are used to connect the power supply or your battery, depending on how you're going to provide the power for your motors. On the other hand, these six pins over here are control pins, and I will explain them later on in this video tutorial. Here's how the experimental setup looks like once we connect everything. DC motor, oscilloscope, power supply, and these are the connection pins that go to my Arduino. I'm controlling a relatively inexpensive DC motor with an internal gear reducer. And on top of that gear reducer, I 3D printed a simple gear reducer in order to amplify the torque over here. I will be using this small experimental setup for another project. Over here on the oscilloscope display, you can see the control signals being sent to the motor. However, I'm not directly sending these exact control signals. Instead, the same type of signal is sent to another port of my DC motor driver. Still, this signal over here is relatively good representation of what's being sent to my DC motor by using the DC motor driver. On the other hand, here's my power supply. I'm providing 12 volts as the power and these power connections are connected to these ports of my DC motor driver. Next, I will demonstrate what happens if we decrease or increase the power supply voltage. Let's increase the power supply voltage and let's see what happens. You can see that the motor spins faster and you can see over here the power being consumed. Let's decrease the voltage and you can see that the motor starts to spin slower and slower. See the power is also decreased. Another experiment that's very useful is the following one. Observe the power over here and then over here I will try to apply an extra force to my shaft and let's see what happens. You can see that the power increases and that's reasonable since we are currently putting a load to our motor. In the sequel, we explain how to connect our motor driver to power supply, Arduino, and to our motor. We connect our motor to these two connection ports. On the other hand, if you have another motor, you will connect it from this side. Then, these two connection ports are used for power supply 
or in case if you're using battery for your battery. In my case, my motor is rated for 12 volts and consequently I'm, I'm applying here 12 volts. This is the ground wire and the ground connection. This wire should be connected to a common ground between Arduino and your power supply. These three ports should be connected to the proper pins of Arduino. The first port denoted by IN3 should be connected to the pin 3 of Arduino. This digital pin is used to control the direction of the motor. I will explain how to control the direction of the motor later on in this video tutorial. Next, the port denoted by IN4 should be connected to the pin 4 or of Arduino. Also, this port is used to control the direction of the motor. And finally, the last port called E and B should be connected to the pin 5 of Arduino. This port is used to control the speed of the motor. I will explain in the sequel how to control the speed of the motor. Next, we will learn how to turn the motor off or on and how to control the direction of the motor. We perform these operations by sending proper voltages to pin 3 and pin 4, that is to the port IN3 and the port IN4. To explain this, over here we will sketch a small table. We have the port IN3 and we have the port IN4. This is pin 3 and this is pin 4. Let's learn how to turn the motor off. To turn the motor off Let's put it here, motor. We will send over here low voltage and over here low voltage. We can also turn the motor off by sending high voltage here and high voltage here. To turn the motor on and to spin the motor in one direction I will denote the direction as the counterclockwise direction. We will send over here high and over here we will send low. On the other hand, to turn the motor on and to spin the motor in the clockwise direction, here we will send low and here we will send high. Here, the clockwise and the counterclockwise direction really do not matter. Depending on how you wire the motor, maybe with this combination high and low, you might turn the motor in the clockwise direction. Next, let us explain how to control the motor speed. We control the motor speed by using the Arduino function analog write. Over here, we specify the port number and we specify the speed. This port number should correspond to E and B port, that is to pin 5 in our case. With the second argument called speed, we control the speed. The speed value is in the range from 0 to 255. 0 corresponds to the lowest speed, that is, the motor is probably not moving, and 255 corresponds to the largest speed. This function actually writes an analog signal, a pulse width modulation signal to the motor pin that drives the motor. Over here we need to define Arduino pins. IN3 is at the pin 3, IN4 is at the pin 4, and E and B is at the pin 5. Here is our setup function. Here is our setup function. We define the pins IN3, IN4, and E and B as output pins. Then, before we start our program, we need to turn off all the motors. Consequently, we perform digital write to the pins IN3 and IN4 and we set the voltage to low. This will shut down the motor. In our loop function that continuously loops and repeats itself, we perform the following tasks. First, we set the speed of the motor. That is, we define our pulse width modulation signal. We enter the value of 220 and we say to analog write to the pin E and B. 
Then over here, we set the direction of the motor and we turn on the motor. Consequently, to the pin IN3 we apply high and to the pin IN4 we apply low. The motor starts to spin in one direction. Then we let the motor spinning for 5 seconds in one direction. Then over here we set the opposite direction. That is, we write to the pin IN3 low and to the pin IN4 high. And we set the motor to spin in the opposite direction and it spins for 5 seconds. And that's basically it.